All right, so um, just a few quick notes before we get started. This presentation is being recorded, so if for some reason you just step away or you need to refer to it later, this recording will be available on Blue Island's YouTube channel and Facebook page starting tomorrow and will be up for one month. Additionally, I'm going to pop this in the chat right now. Uh, there is a handout that goes with this presentation. Let me upload it. Here it is. All right, so if you look in the chat, you'll see a attachment for that handout. It's called Cutting the Cable Cord. Um, you can download that at your convenience, but that handout has some information that I'm going over in this presentation, but in more detail. So pricing, names of the devices, price ranges, um, all that kind of stuff. It is a little long, but it's something really nice to refer back to um, if you do have questions and you're ready to cut the cord. So a little bit about me. Um, I haven't had cable for a very long time. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I cut the cable cord mostly out of um, financial need. I was in college and having a traditional cable package was just way too much for me and my budget. So I started with Netflix and um, I went on from there and I haven't had cable for over 10 years. And I'll be honest, I really don't miss it. I'm still able to watch everything that I want. Um, I feel like I don't miss out on everything in between my streaming services and the services that the library provides. I feel like I have access to everything. So through this presentation, I'll talk about how you can cut the cable cord, what you'll need to break up with your cable company, and then um, kind of going over the streaming services and devices that are out there. If you do have questions during the presentation, pop them in the chat. I will read them out. Don't feel like you're interrupting me at all. I'm here to help. I'm here to be interrupted. So. so if you decide to cut the cable cord, uh, there are a couple things that you do need in order to get what you want. So, <laughs> you know, you can't just tell Comcast, see you later. I never want to talk to you again. Unfortunately, you do need an internet connection. Um, this internet connection will allow you to stream content to your television. Um, and we'll go over the specific types of internet connections that you need later on in the presentation. Uh, you will need a streaming device. Um, again, we'll go over those a lot later too. Um, a device is anything that allows you to access the various streaming options. Um, you may already have one of these and we'll go over that in detail in a little bit. And so if you have internet and a streaming device, you're like halfway there. Um, a lot of the effort has been done for you. Streaming options, also known as streaming services or streaming channels, that's gonna allow you to access the content you want, like TV shows, movies, et cetera. Um, a lot of these services are not live TV, but in the past uh, two years or so, a lot of live TV options have surfaced. So. We'll get more that into that later. And then a third option that you can consider is a digital antenna. Um, unless you have an antenna built on into your television set or you have those little like bunny ears, uh, might be hard to get the basic public broadcast channels like 257. Uh, so a digital antenna is a great option that doesn't require internet, doesn't require streaming service. It just gives you live TV without anything else. Another important thing to consider is your budget. <laughs> um, a lot of this stuff can add up very quickly, and we'll see more of that when we talk about the streaming options. You know, once you have your Netflix, your Hulu, Amazon, HBO, Stars, you know, soon enough you're paying just as much as you did for a traditional cable. So it's important to think about how much you want to spend when you cut the cable cord, because the end goal is. You want to save money and, <coughs> excuse me, you don't want to, um, you know, have that huge monthly cable bill anymore. If we can go down uh, between your internet and your streaming service to 30 bucks a month compared to 200 with Comcast, 
um, for cable, that's amazing. That's a huge amount of savings that you can put towards a lot of different things. So here I have diagrammed a typical streaming setup. So on the left, you'll see um, just the <laughs> artistic rendition of a wireless internet connection. Um, that internet talks to your streaming device which can be a lot of things. Here I have just a picture of uh, a Roku, which is one of the popular ones. So that streaming device connects to the internet wirelessly, and then also connects to the TV through usually your HDMI port, and that just plugs right into the side of your television. And then on the end side, we have your home television. So that's kind of what a typical streaming setup looks like, although everyone is a little bit different depending on your device. But typically, the streaming device goes into your HDMI port. It talks wirelessly to your internet router and everything works very seamlessly. So as I mentioned before, you need uh, an internet connection when you cut the cable cord. Uh, an active Wi-Fi connection allows you to stream from the services like Netflix and stuff. I usually say to stream a two hour movie in HD, which like, you know, looks very crisp and nice, you need three to 25 megabits per second per stream. Um, so let me explain. That's how much information is going through the internet as you're watching, um, rather downloading from the internet, but that's per screen. So if you have a family of four, and each one is streaming a movie at the same time, you'll need at least 20 megabits per second for everyone to enjoy their content. However, if you want it to look good and not be interrupted or refresh, you probably want to go 100. Um, so one thing to note is that cable TV, you never really experience pauses or buffering with depending on your internet connection, that could happen when you watch things. So things might pause, it might take a while to load and play. I really don't see this as much as I used to when I started streaming. Um, but um, it is a really important thing to try to test your internet connection. Um, there are some easy ways to do that. Um, there's a website called speedtest.net that will test your internet connection for you. Um, you just go there and you hit the go button and it tells you your upload speed and your download speed, and you're interested in your download speed. So you wanna make sure it's in that 25 megabits per second range. Um, if you have megabytes per second, even better, even better. Um, another important thing to consider if you're a big technophile and you want the best of the best or someone in your household wants the best of the best, the new thing um, for streaming is 4K. Uh, most HD is uh, 1080p, and so 4K is four times better than 1080p. So <laughs> what that means is uh, it'll be better picture quality, it'll look nicer. However, that's just more information coming down the pipeline. So that 25 megabits might not be enough for a 4K. Um, so if you have a 4K TV and you, know, you want to watch things in 4K, it might be worth looking into a higher internet connection. Again, keep that budget in mind. The last time I looked, the standard Comcast internet package is 15 megabits per second, um, which is not that bad. You can watch a lot of things with that, especially if you don't care about the picture quality or anything. So you might already have this and you're good to go. <clears throat> but I would try that speedtest.net just to make sure everything is working. Any questions about internet connections before I move on? I don't see any, but if you have any, just let me know. So in order to access streaming channels like Netflix and such, you need some sort of device to access those services. So this is kind of like a replacement to your cable box. Um, the best part is, um, and I find this a lot, you may already have a streaming device and not know it, which saves you money. So if you already have your internet at 25 megabits per second and you already have a streaming device and you have a TV, you 
you can just get rid of your cable service right now and you're okay. So I have listed some of the streaming devices that you can use. A smart TV, those are becoming more and more prevalent. The TV, so instead of that um, wireless, or sorry, streaming setup I showed you in the beginning where your Wi-Fi interacts with the streaming device and then goes to your TV, you cut out that middle part and the Wi-Fi connects to your TV. You download apps, um, basically like you would on a smartphone to access your streaming services and you're done. Um, Blu-ray players, um, video game consoles. So if you have um, anyone who's a big gamer, you're good there. Um, even a laptop with a connection to your TV, usually an HDMI cord, can stream content. But the big three that I see most often are the Roku, the Amazon Fire Stick, and uh, Chromecast. To a lesser extent, uh, Apple TV is out there, but out of all the options, the Roku, the Amazon, and the Chromecast, um, Apple TV is the most expensive. I believe that device starts at $150. <laughs> um, so first thing I would do is I would make sure that you don't have a streaming device in your house already. And if you do not, um, I would look at the handout and check the prices. Right now, the lowest priced um, streaming device is the Roku Express uh, stick that just plugs into your TV's HDMI port and you're good to go. It's about like $30. Um, again, the most expensive is Apple. Um, there are two options too, the boxes versus the sticks. Honestly, both are really good now. The boxes used to have a lot more stability um, in regards to streaming, but um, you know, I've been using the stick ones for a while and I haven't noticed a difference at all. So um, think about your budget again, um, 30 bucks, not that much. And if you want to wait, you can always find it on sale, usually around like Black Friday or something. So worth checking out to see what fits your needs. So there are <laughs> hundreds of free and paid streaming services now. Um, I've listed the most popular here. So there's Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, HBO Max, and Amazon Prime. So these services give you access to content in shows and movies that you want to watch. But um, again, it's not typically live TV. It's all on-demand watching. Um, but you get an access, you get access to like an extensive amount of TV shows and movies. And more frequently too, a lot of these channels are producing their own original content that you cannot watch on cable television. And you can't even get as a DVD until like sometimes even years after it's come out. So there are benefits to each one. Um, right now, the cheapest per month is Hulu. Uh, you will see still see um, ads during um, your TV shows, but most of these you will not see ads, which is another kind of benefit to it. Not, not that ads are <laughs> annoying, but it saves you a little bit of time. It's all unlimited. You can watch as much as you want. You don't get cut off. Sometimes it'll ask if you're still watching, <laughs> but that's as, that's as much of an interruption as you'll get. Um, and all of these are month to month. So no contracts, you can cancel anytime. They may try to guilt trip you when you cancel, but if for some reason your financial situation changes and you're like, hey, I gotta cut out one of these services, or you just find that, you know what? I'm not really watching Netflix. I'm using Hulu all the time. Uh, you can cancel, no harm, no foul, and you move on with your life. Um, so not a huge deal. The one important thing to note is that these things continually change their offer offerings. It's all about um, their contracts with different studios. So for instance, if you really like The Office and you were watching on Netflix, the next day it might be gone. <laughs> In fact, it is gone. <laughs> um, now that NBC has their own streaming service, um, it's moved to Peacock. So there are hundreds of different streaming channels and they change all the time. Um, it's really hard to keep track of them, uh, so, but that's something important to note. Um, and there's a lot of specialty channels too. If you find like you're only really watching 
British television shows. There are a few different streaming options that you can look into from that, like Acorn TV or BritBox, and then you can cancel Netflix. Um, lots and lots of options. In fact, there's so many. Um, the handout goes over the big ones and then some other ones too. If you're a sports fan, there are also streaming channels for the NBA, the NHL, the NFL, and you can get team specific packages. So I know we're in Chicago, we have the Bears, but if for some reason you're a like 49ers fan, you could get a special streaming package for um, your favorite team. It is rather pricey, but it is something to keep in mind. Now, in the last few years, there's been a lot of live TV options. So, like I said, most streaming channels are not live. It's all on demand. You can watch anytime. Um, but this live TV option, it's basically like cable. Um, you know, you can watch the Super Bowl as it's playing instead of watching a recording later. You can pause it. You can play it, you know, you can do everything you want. You can even fast forward through some commercials sometimes. So live TV is an option. When I first started teaching this class, this was kind of the hardest thing for some people to reconcile, especially sports fans, because they couldn't watch their favorite teams play live. But now that's really gone by the wayside. It is more expensive than streaming services. So even the um, examples I have here, the monthly, the lowest monthly cost is 25 bucks a month for Philo. And as opposed to um, when we looked at the streaming channel options on the last slide and the lowest was $7. But you, you know, you get what you pay for. So you can watch live sports, um, live reality shows, you know, whatever you're interested in watching. And I've also noticed in the last two years, Classic cable companies like Comcast and DirecTV have pivoted and created their own um, live TV streaming options. Like, I think Comcast is called Xfinity Stream, and then DirecTV is just called DirecTV Stream. So other cable providers and networks may follow suit. Um, their prices are really hard to uh, pin down because they give you a lot of different prices depending on if you're returning, all this stuff. So. Something to keep in mind, you might not be saving that much money if you get the live TV option, um, or maybe if that's, you know, you're looking at your budget, maybe you only want YouTube TV as your, your option. Um, so again, they, these work exactly the same as having cable. Um, live channels are presented in real time, except they come streaming over the internet rather than a cable wire. Um, you can even record shows. Uh, in the handout, I outline um, what every service offers, but a lot of them offer a DVR called Cloud DVR. So you can record shows or sporting events that you might not be able to see and watch them anytime, um, and, which is nice because if you ever had DVR, you had to rent a box or something, and now it's all on the internet. Um, and you can also add extra channels and, and whatnot too. So I uh, Kind of going back to budgeting, it's really easy to see how all this stuff can add up. <laughs> um, if you get YouTube TV at $65 a month, and then you get Netflix at 10, and then say you also want to get Amazon, and that's another $9, you know, you're already looking at, um, you know, over 80 bucks a month, plus your internet bill, which could be like 30 bucks a month. So um, that's why I think having a budget at the get-go is really, really important. It shows you, you know, how much everything is going to end up being. And the final option is getting a digital antenna. So if you're like, Amy, I don't really care about Netflix. I don't care about, you know, all these fancy channels. I just want basic over-the-air channels like CBS, NBC, ABC. Great. Um, if you don't have an antenna connected to your TV, a digital antenna is probably the best thing for you. So a lot of them look like this one that's on the right, the kind of like box. Um, so again, it's live TV, doesn't require the internet to work. 
Um, they're relatively inexpensive. Again, <clears throat> you can get these on Amazon starting at like 15 bucks and, and going up from there. Um, the picture will look like pretty decent. Um, all you do is you slap that kind of that pad looking thing on a window, preferably one that is facing a tower and is unobstructed, so no big trees, <clears throat> no metal scaffolding, <laughs> anything like that, and you're good to go. Um, and then you can tell your cable company to take a hike. So it depends on your needs. Um, I personally don't have experience with digital antennas, but um, from patrons who have talked about it and friends that have used it, uh, it's varying degrees of success. <clears throat> it gets harder in the city, I will say, because you just have a lot more things to obstruct the antenna's view, like trees, other buildings, etc. But in the suburbs, it seems like it, it's a good option. Um, Again, these are channels if you do get a live TV option that you will have access to, but um, it's definitely cheaper. You pay, you know, 16 bucks for a digital antenna, and then that's it, and then you have those channels forever. So <clears throat> no monthly fees, no internet required, um, something really easy that you could do. And finally, um, you know, if you want to try some stuff out, um, but you don't want to make the money invested now, the library has a lot of things to help you out. So for internet, we have Wi-Fi hotspots available to check out. You can check them out for 14 days, and all you need is a Blue Island library card. Um, unfortunately, it's only available to Blue Island residents. However, if you're from another library, your library might also have a hotspot option for you to check out. But if you don't have internet and you want to try out streaming, that's a great way. Um, and if you want to try out a streaming channel before picking Netflix or whatever, we also have Canopy. So that's a free streaming service similar to Netflix that provides TV shows, movies, documentaries, foreign films. Um, and I believe you get 10 checkouts a month. So if you're watching a TV series, that's 10 episodes. If you're watching movies, that's 10 movies. Again, that's for Blue Island residents. But if you are... A resident of another town, your library might also have Canopy. And finally, <laughs> uh, the library also has Roku um, sticks to check out. So those are the things that plug into your um, TV's HDMI port. So if you already have Wi-Fi at home and if you already have a TV with an HDMI port, you can check out a Roku Express and try get a free trial of Netflix, try out Canopy, try out whatever you want and see if it's for you. You know, we're here to help and um, why spend the money and try it out and you hate it, you know? Use the library services to try it out if you can before you make the investment. But that is all I have for you today. Um, I put the Blue Island Library's email up there, reference department at blueislandlibrary.org. They'd be happy to answer any questions about <clears throat> the it, services I just discussed in the last slide, if you need the handout, they can email that to you, or if you have any questions about how to cut the cable cord, they can help you out as well. Um, do you have any questions for me about cutting the cable cord? I am going to actually, there you go. Um, I just turned on the ability to unmute yourself, so if you want to ask a question, uh, with your voice, you can unmute yourself and ask me, or if you'd rather type it out, you can pop it in the chat and I will answer any questions. I am not seeing anything pop up. Oh, what goes first? Call the cable company to cancel cable or first get information from the streaming services? That's a great question, Esther. Um, so um, getting the information from the streaming services is really easy. Um, you will need to go online 
and do that um, to sign up and make an account. And you can usually get a free trial. I would actually suggest um, <clears throat> calling your cable company to cancel cable first, because that's what takes the longest. From going to Netflix's website and signing up and getting it set up on your TV, it takes like five minutes. But <laughs> as you probably know, um, calling the cable company to cancel and then returning all their equipment can take days. So I would cancel your cable first. Um, and while you're waiting for that process to unravel, maybe do, um, look at the handout or go online and check out um, what some of these streaming services offer and make a decision in the interim. And then you're good to go. And especially with, you know, Amazon Prime and stuff like that, you could get your streaming device if you don't have one within a day or two. Whereas I know when I canceled my cable, that took like a whole week <laughs> of my life. So I would suggest uh, canceling your cable first. They'll probably give you like an end date to return all your equipment and then um, signing up for a streaming service and setting it up. 